Hello, welcome to today's uh, daily prayer service for April 8th, 2020. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. There we go. Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Our readings today are Psalm 5 and 147, 1 through 11, Lamentations 2, 1 through 9, 2 Corinthians 1, 23 through 2, 11, and Mark 12, 1 through 11. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you I pray, O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction. Their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exult in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. Morning Psalm 147, 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds. He determines the number of their stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his steadfast love. Our first reading is Lamentations 2, 1 through 9. How the Lord in his anger has humiliated daughter Zion. He has thrown down from heaven to earth the splendor of Israel. He has not remembered his footstool in the day of his anger. The Lord has destroyed without mercy all the dwellings of Jacob. In his wrath, he has broken down the strongholds of daughter Judah. He has brought down to the ground in dishonor the kingdom and its rulers. He has cut down in fierce anger all the might of Israel. He has withdrawn his right hand from them in the face of the enemy. He has burned like a flaming fire in Jacob, consuming all around. He has bent his bow like an enemy, with his right hand set like a foe. He has killed all in whom he took pride in the tent of daughter Zion. He has poured out his fury like fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He has destroyed Israel. He has destroyed all its places, laid in ruins its strongholds, and multiplied in daughter Zion, uh, daughter Judah, mourning and lamentation. He has brought down his booth like a garden. He has destroyed his tabernacle. The Lord has abolished in Zion festival and Sabbath, and in his fierce indignation has spurned king and priest. The Lord has scorned his altar, disowned his sanctuary. He has delivered into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces, 
a clamor was raised in the house of the Lord as on a day of festival. The Lord determined to lay in ruins the wall of daughter Zion. He stretched the line. He did not withhold his hand from destroying. He caused rampart and wall to lament. They languished together. Her gates have sunk into the ground. He has ruined the broken and broken her bars. Her kings, king and princes are among the nations. Guidance is no more, and her prophets obtain no vision from the Lord. Second Corinthians one twenty three through two eleven. But I call on God as witness against me. It was to spare you that I did not come again in to Corinth. I do not mean to imply that we lord it over your faith. Rather, we are workers with you for your joy, because you stand firm in the faith. So I made up my mind not to make you another painful visit. For if I cause you pain, who is there to make me glad but the one whom I have pained? And I wrote that wrote as I did, so that when I came, I might not suffer pain from those who should have made me rejoice. For I am confident about all of you that my joy would be the joy of all of you. For I wrote you out of much distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to cause you pain, but to let you know the abundant love that I have for you. But if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but to some extent, not to exaggerate it, to all of you. This punishment by the majority is enough for such a person. So now instead, you should forgive and console him so that he might not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. So I urge you to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote for this reason, to test you and to know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sake in the presence of Christ. And we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. In our gospel reading, Mark chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Then he began to speak to them in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a pit for the wine press, and built a watchtower. When he leased it to tenants, he went to another country. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants to collect from them as sure, uh, his share of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Again he sent another slave to them. This one they beat over the head and insulted. Then he sent another, and that one they killed. And so it was with many others. Some they beat, and others they killed. He had still one other, a beloved son. Finally he sent him to them, saying, They will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him, killed him, and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. So our readings today, all great ones as always. Um, Psalm 5 is always a a favorite of mine. My hair is doing all sorts of funny twirly things. There we go. Um, So Lamentations, we're continuing on. These are, again, the Lamentations of presumably this is the prophet Judah looking over Israel that has been exiled. Jerusalem has been destroyed by the Babylonian Empire. Most of her people have been taken out, and he is lamenting over the fact. And he has some very troubling words for her because, and for us because he is laying the responsibility. Who, who has been responsible for this? It's easy to blame Babylon, but he says it is the Lord who has done all of this. The Lord has risen up against his people. The Lord has destroyed his temple. The Lord has destroyed Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away this hedge of protection away from around uh, Jerusalem and allowed her enemies, Babylon, to come and destroy her. God is sovereign in all things. 
God is over all. And God allows terrible things. In fact, sometimes God even causes terrible things to happen. These are not fun words for us to hear right now in the midst of a pandemic. To wonder, has God caused this to happen? And again, I've said, I, there's, it's troubling to say that God has caused something to happen. Uh, I personally, at least, would tend towards that God allows things to happen. Um, but in allowing things to happen, God sort of kind of causes them. God allows things to happen. Why? Because God has greater plans in all of this. Because God gives uh, consequences sometimes to our actions. For Judah, it was the destruction of Jerusalem after prophet, uh, after prophet, after prophet, after prophet, after prophet had been sent to, to speak this word to them that they needed to repent and they did not want to listen. Some they beat and some they killed. And so God destroys them, causes them to listen. And in fact, we know that period of exile is when really the people of, of Israel became the people of Israel. They became the people of the book. They became people rooted in worship of the living God in their scriptures, they understood who they were because they didn't have a land anymore. And they would eventually come back to this land and they wouldn't do as well as they needed to. Sounds familiar. God is at work in us during this time. God is at work in the world, in our nation, in our states, in our towns, in our families. God is at work in all of this. God has allowed all of this to happen, and God has great purposes in it. And so our call is to trust that God is at work and to learn the lessons that we are called to learn at this time. Sometimes there are strong and not fun words. Paul gives this uh, explanation of in Corinthians, uh, second, what we call Second Corinthians, of First Corinthians, that he said he had these strong words for them, partially because he didn't want to have those strong words with them in person, so he sent these things ahead. And we might remember those strong words. A lot of them were around. There was one particular man in the in the church that um, was in an adulterous relationship with his mother-in-law. And the church seemed to have no problem with it. And Paul says, no, there should be a problem with this. And he had some very strong words for that man and for the, the community around him. But now you notice he has some different words for them. He has these words of grace for the community. He says, that person that you uh, sort of by majority have sent out from among you, send out to him and tell him you love him. Reach out to him in love and in grace. The purpose for excommunication, especially in the, Old in the New Testament, was for the purpose of repentance. Just as, as God sort of exiled the people to Babylon so that they may understand who they are and then brought them back so that man who has been excommunicated from the church should be brought back in. The grace of God should not, uh, or should always overwhelm the, the conviction of sin. That is the gospel. And in fact, this is the great good news that Jesus proclaims using um, sort of borrowing imagery from Isaiah chapter 5 and the, um, the vineyard, the song of the vineyard. He describes God as this person who, who builds this vineyard. And puts everything in it that it needs. In Isaiah, he gets wild grapes instead of good grapes. Here in Mark, he hires people to oversee this garden and then leaves. And comes back and, and sends emissaries to, to come and, and receive what he should. right? The just rewards as the owner of this vineyard. And they beat them and they killed them. 
This is the prophets that God sent over and over and over. Finally, God sends, or the the owner of the vineyard sends his own son to collect on that, uh, that bill of repentance. And even them, him, they do not listen to. They beat him and take him out of the city and they kill him. This is, of course, a foreshadowing for what will happen later in this week for us and for Jesus. He is telling them exactly the way that things are going to go. And in this, he is revealing God's plan. God's plan here is to send out those who have been put in charge and yet have not been faithful. We remember this is not that long after Jesus saw the fig tree and did not get the fruit and cursed it, went to the temple, did not see the fruit that he wanted to see, that it be a place of prayer for the nations, and cursed it. Sent the people out and set up a a proper temple, a place where people could meet God, where people could learn and pray for that week. He is doing that now. Eventually, these people will be shut out. But the hope is, and and Paul proclaims this in Romans, that they will be brought back in again. The purpose for the, the Jewish people sort of being supplanted by the Gentiles is not that they be supplanted, but that they be saved through that interaction. These are hard and and, um, not-so-fun words for us during Holy Week, which is appropriate. God has called us to this time, um, this time of challenge, this time of crisis, this time to repent, to listen to God's word for us today. And I pray that we would do that. Let's go ahead and look at our devotion from Becoming a Beloved Community. all screwy again. All right, sorry. So how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good and sees his brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help from 1 John 3, 17? They have nowhere to go, Dad. Jessica is a student and Daniel lost his job. Their landlord just more than doubled the rent and they can't pay. We either take them in or they'll be living in their car with little Anthony, my daughter replied daughter pleaded. Anthony was eight years, months old, excuse me. Well, what about their parents or relatives, maybe, I asked. Their parents can't afford to help and live on the other side of the country, my daughter replied. Okay, I said. Jessica was my daughter's age, just 21 or so, and attended the local community college with her. This young, struggling couple reminded me of my wife and myself at that age. At one point, we had nothing. We were forced to live with our newborn son on a travel trailer in a backyard with with no heat or running water and used to help use the help of social services to get by while I worked 19 hour days with three jobs. We'll have to break out the camping pads and sleeping bags. They can stay as long as they need, I told my daughter. And so the young parents and their son found a refuge in their time of need. The beloved community is supposed to be one of love, grace, and hospitality, where we identify as one large family and none are in want. If this is to be true, then we must make it so. God, open my heart to the opportunities to share with others, and in doing so, show the world your grace and goodness. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using our liturgy for today. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Loving God, as as the rising sun chases away the night, so you have scattered the power of death in the rising of Jesus Christ, and you bring us all blessings in him. Especially we thank you for the ministry of word and sacrament.
those who serve and care for others. The affection of our friends. Your call to love and serve one another. The presence and power of your spirit. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? Mighty God, with the dawn of your love, you reveal your victory over all that would destroy or harm, and you brighten the lives of all who love who need you. Especially we pray for the church in the Pacific region. Endangered species of animals and plants. Those who are isolated by sickness or sorrow. Those who suffer mental anguish. All who seek the way and truth of Christ. People of God, for what else do we pray? Take all our doubts and uncertainties, O God, and fill us with such faith that we may be confident of your love and loyal in the service of him who died and yet lives for us. Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Now the God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, and click the notification button and the subscription button as well. If uh, our readings today came from the daily lectionary readings of the Reform Common Lectionary and were New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Our liturgy came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA 2018 edition. And our devotion came from Becoming a Beloved Community, produced by Presbyterians Today. For more information, go to our website, faithpresbyterianSC.com, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.